What's going on, everybody? Good evening. It's Wednesday, June 22nd, 6.30 p.m. my time, and we got prices of Bitcoin currently at 20,000 flat. Um, as you're watching this video, please do hit the thumbs up if you do like my content. Leave me a comment of your thoughts, and also leave me a comment or join our Discord community to let me know if there are certain projects or certain aspects of the space that you want me to cover. I'll be more than happy to look at them. Uh, if you want to join our Advantage subscription, you can go to thealphatrades.com, hit the products page and join our membership right here, $97 per month. You get videos like this twice a day, as well as private research that is uh, given to you um, through our Discord or through emails. Okay, so let's get started. All right, um, Bitcoin price action. So obviously about two days ago, or I guess day and a half ago, we hit this local high of 21,500. Uh, the community and I decided to short this thing right around there, the breach of this ascending trend line. We took this trade um, right into about 20,500. So we captured a nice, I think from here down about a 3% move. Um, we closed that position out. Um, and then as the US morning session was opening up earlier this morning, um, I saw this move happening. And I told Advantage members um, that as long as we stay above 20,000, there is optionality to still stay long in this area, right? Because 20,000 is a very important level. Um, you know, I, I would say there's two important levels right now that you want to be paying attention to 20,000, and then this level right here, which is 20,787. If you look at 20,787, which is uh, this line right here, you can kind of see it stretches across, goes over here. You know, this is your deviation. Right. This is another deviation. Once it breaks down, rejects this level and then sells off. OK, so that's a pretty critical level that I believe that the market is going to try to respect. Um, and of course, the twenty thousand dollar level, which is hugely sort of interactive right around this price action, what we're seeing right now. So I think that as long as you can stay above twenty thousand, um, I think that's a potential long. If we start drifting down, start rejecting this area like this, and we start breaking down, I think that's probably a short stop up here. And I would aim for this as your first target profit, and then probably these lows around 17,500 as your next target profit, okay? I mentioned a fractal for my Advantage members a couple of days back. Um, I'll mention it one more time. It kind of looks like this. If you look in 2018, Right. Once we had that flush from 6,000, once we broke that floor of 6,000, let me see if I can pull that up for y'all real quick. OK, here's kind of how it looks. Right. Um, this is the current price action right now. OK, if you look at this, right, see this white behind it, this bars, these bars. This is what happened in 2018. And this all in the red and green is all 2022. OK, so look at the similarities of what we're going through right now. And then look what happened way the heck back here in 2018. Okay, check this out, right? See that price action? Oops. I think if you look at it carefully, I believe you can make some sort of um, case that we are just moving away from this high, putting in this you know, floor, might pop up a little bit, and then we might start our descent back down which could be, you know, the targeting of these lows, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be exact, right? I'm not saying that these fractals have to pay, play out exactly the same way. In fact, I'm actually of the opinion right now that we're probably going to chop around closer to the highs, you know, between 20,000 and 21 and a half for maybe a couple of days. And uh, that will probably give relief to altcoins not Ethereum. Um, I think Ethereum is going to struggle. I think Ethereum is tied to the hip with Bitcoin, but I do believe that things like Solana are going to play out pretty well. Um, I think Rune, AVAX, Atom, and Matic, I've got my eye on. Um, especially Matic, if you actually look at Matic, we have a inverse head and shoulders pattern right here being created. As long as Matic can kind of stay above this neckline, um, Matic can easily, okay, easily from here, target this next high right here around 54 cents, which is almost a 17% move. And then after that, I think it can get all the way up here at these lows, at these lows around uh, 0.56, which is around a 21% move. 
Okay. So I'm just letting y'all know, you know, my thought process of what's happening with alts. Um, I personally believe they're going to squeeze more. It may not be Matic indiv individually. It may be other alts. Um, and I want to talk about some other alts of why I'm focusing on certain aspects within crypto uh, versus, you know, just some random altcoins, right? So let's first go to Arthur Hayes' article, Floaters. If you haven't read this already, a fantastic article of how he sort of sees the space right now. And you have to sort of dig down a little bit further, which is looking into what Arthur Hayes talks about, which is uh, decentralized exchanges, okay? DEXs versus CEXs, which is centralized exchanges. He specifically talks about Uniswap having a you know, pretty attractive price to sales ratio, as well as SushiSwap. Um, he talks about pancake swap a little bit, but more so Uniswap and Sushi. Uh, and then he talks a little bit further about um, uh, GMX, which is another one somewhere down here, right? Let me see here. So he talks about DYDX and then he talks about GMX as well. Okay. So DYDX, GMX, Uniswap, and um, uh, Sushi Swap. These are the four protocols that are considered DEXs or you know, you might have um, a decentralized, um, uh, decentralized, uh, what's it called? Like uh, perpetual swaps that you could trade as well. Okay, that is what DYDX is trying to create. Um, so point is that these exchanges, right? And then, you know, per protocol is obviously part of it. One inch is part of it. But he specifically focused on Uniswap, Sushi, DYDX, and uh, GMX. Now, What's interesting about all these is if you actually look at the metrics, okay, they are at a very, very attractive level. They're not at the high valuations that they used to be, you know, several months ago, right? So if there is a case to be made for these to, you know, push up over the next few months, the, the value attraction is now, right? From a price perspective, it's like the time basically to buy. Again, not investment advice, but this is kind of what Arthur is alluding to, which is, well, you know, these protocols that are far more attractive based on their metrics now than they were two, three, four months ago. Okay. So just keep that in mind. All right. And I think, you know, same thing has happened with many other uh, assets. I believe that Solana is probably a very, very sort of overlooked asset. Yes, it may have more downside, you know, over the coming months, but it's at a very, very attractive level, even right now. Um, it's obviously, you know, sold off almost 90% from the highs, but if you believe that Solana is going to have a strong community, strong utility and strong presence in the market, right? In the coming years, well, then these are pretty attractive prices. Okay. So Arthur makes a case of, you know, all these protocols that I mentioned, um, multi-coin capital actually makes a case of, uh, NFTs owning their own exchanges, if you will, like instead of OpenSea or Magic Eden, he is kind of uh, advocating for NFTs to have their own sort of um, horizontal, uh, uh, horizontal, you know, NFT platform that they themselves own versus, you know, a third party like Magic Eden or OpenSea. So what you want to pay attention to is, you know, you want to see what NFT communities are banding together to create their own built out exchange, which is also fully decentralized, right? Because OpenSea and Magic Eden are definitely centralized exchanges. Now, moving on from centralized versus decentralized, um, you know, the one interesting from uh, Jeff Dorman's blog, which is Arca right here. If you haven't followed Jeff Dorman, definitely do. Um, you can find his uh, Twitter handle and everything on my Twitter feed or Arca um, blog. Okay, so if you actually look at all these tweets, right? So let me sort of zoom out of here. So Matt Huang talking about you know C5 versus DeFi and all the issues that DeFi uh, could have hopefully avoided, you know, if uh, DeFi was a bigger thing or DEXs were a bigger thing, right? So what he says is we're likely to see both DeFi and C5 blowups, but DeFi is revealing its many advantages. Most DeFi seems to be handling volatility pretty gracefully. Uh, many saw the Luna UST blow up coming from before the crisis, given DeFi's openness and transparency, right? Um, Tom Schultz, uh, Celsius and three euros capital may be in uh, crypto, but the systems they run off of are, are, are archaic, opaque, and unclear like the traditional financial institutions that preceded it, 
right? But he talks about, you know, a case for, for DeFi um, here, and I think he did it in a, in a Twitter spaces as well. Um, Alex Kruger, who talks about, you know, uh, the interesting about, I'm sorry, let me go to the other tweets real quick. Uh, three euros capital and Celsius collapse has nothing to do with blockchain transparency. Again, talking about DeFi, talking about, you know, what uh, we're actually trying to build in crypto, which is decentralized finance, um, uh, DEXs, as well as you know, no middleman or no CEO or anyone who could stop those transactions or create a you know, massive market risk, right? Um, let me see here. So Santiago or Santos, every collapse is coming from centralized institutions, as you can see, or centralized pretending to be decentralized. This reinforces the need for DeFi. If you can't audit and control your collateral 24-7, 365, then it's not DeFi, it's CeFi, right? And then finally, Chris Bernisk, um, someone who's been you know, part of the VC and Ethereum space for the past several years. Um, on the whole, uh, true DeFi's functioning has been remar uh, remarkably resilient while CeFi suffers from old age uh, um, risk management problems, right? Uh, again, open protocols versus black boxes. So of all of this information, right, as well as if you kind of look at this big... Um, this big sort of screenshot of all the people, whether it's Sam Bankman-Fried right there, or 219, or Maya, or um, Jake Chervinsky, who is a lawyer in the crypto space, all these people are talking about the necessity of DeFi going forward, right? So add to the fact that Arthur Hayes is talking about DEXs and you know specific components within DeFi, Add to the fact that multi uh, multi coin capital is also talked about, you know NFT marketplaces needing to build out their own sort of horizontal marketplaces, and then of course Arca blog talking about the uh, positivity behind DeFi. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you that you need to start focusing your attention over the next few days or the next few weeks into certain aspects of DeFi. Now, again, I don't quite know how long the space will take to sort of come out of this bear market or crypto winter. I don't even know which products are going to come out, but I sure as heck I'm going to start doing research of what products have done you know, exceptionally well in the downturn that we've had so far, um, what teams are still well capitalized, uh, they have good treasury management, they keep building, uh, they keep you know, showing their vision and their, their possibility for a better future for, for crypto. That's what I'm going to be looking into. And some of the assets that I'm definitely going to be focusing on, some things that Arthur has mentioned, definitely Uniswap. Um, I'll definitely be focusing on bridges because I also believe that bridges are going to be a big thing. If you believe that you know, the world is going to be multi-chain ahead, right? if you believe that Cosmos is to connect with Ethereum and Ethereum needs to connect with Solana and Solana needs to connect with Rune, right? then bridges are necessary okay? to, to move that liquidity and make it easier for users to move you know, uh, seamlessly between different chains. right? So bridges and certain DeFi protocols is what I'm paying attention to. All right. So, you know, all these things I just want to state and mention to y'all that in a down market, this is where you need to start doing research, right? This is where, um, you know, this is where the kings are made of the next cycle. Don't just give up and don't just say, well, it's a down market and I don't need to do anything. Our community has been in the down markets and in the up markets since 2017. I grinded all the way through the bear market of 2018 and 19. Uh, and you can look up all my videos on YouTube. You can ask any of my community members on Discord or Twitter. Um, you can look up all my tweets, everything that you need to look up, right? I have grinded all the way through the, those markets. Uh, and one thing I can tell you is you have to stay resilient, right? You have to sort of um, be willing to come in day in and day out, put in the time, put in the effort, do the research. One thing I see, you know, from most people in the crypto, crypto space and down markets is they decide to leave. They decide to stop doing research. They decide to, you know, stop, um, you know, basically putting in their time that's necessary uh, to grow the space or to grow their investments or to invest in themselves or invest in crypto. And that is not going to work. You don't just get to enjoy the bull market when, you know, uh, it's in the middle or at the top without having to sort of recognize that bull markets are born out of bear markets, right? And if you're able to capitalize at the bottom, you know, range of the bear market, you will, um, 
you know, fully utilize the upswing of the bull market, right? You'll maximize, uh, you know, far greater returns if you do put in the work in the bear markets. All right. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, you know, Solana and all these other assets I'm paying attention to look for squeezes over the next few days. Cause you know, we may have a whole lot of chop here, you know, Solana could pull down another, you know, five, 7%, keep an eye on this ascending trend line. If Solana breaks down, keep an eye on 31 to about $30 somewhere down here. Uh, and as long as it kind of stays above this ascending trend line, Solana can still, you know, push a little bit higher towards 40, $45 or something. Okay. Um, same thing, you know, I'm paying attention to AVAX as well. I think AVAX looks a lot weaker than Solana, but as long as AVAX kind of maintains, whoops, as long as AVAX maintains above this low of the range right here, right? Uh, it's possible that it could, you know, push up from here and maybe even creating an inverse head and shoulders like this. Okay. So just keep that in mind, you know, make sure you keep an eye on the opportunities uh, for the long side as people are uh, aggressively bearish in the current market. Um, now I'm not saying that you need to start getting long right away and you need to start levering up or anything. Again, not financial advice. I don't think it's necessary to get levered up anytime soon in the market. Uh, personally, I think that there are going to be far more opportunities that the market is going to give us over the next few months. For now, I'm just looking to trade the range. I'm looking for, you know, oversold conditions, um, you know, to capitalize as long opportunities. And then once people get too bullish, uh, right near the local range highs, I want to start shorting, right? So I'm playing the range, playing the internals, uh, and that's, you know, the best I can do. Okay. Again, if you like my analysis, make sure you hit the thumbs up, make sure you join our discord community, uh, community, the channel link is below or in the top right of your video. And then of course, thealphatrades.com, join our membership. I promise you, you will not regret it. We've been here since 2018 and 19 bear market. We were here for the 2017 bull market and we're here now in 2022 and we'll continue to be here, okay? If you like this analysis, uh, come join our community. Until then, take care, good luck, talk soon.